Hello folks, Jeff here from the Denver Folklore Center and uh, today we are going to show you the process for setting a bridge on a banjo. A banjo as well as a mandolin has a movable or floating bridge and so it's just held down by the string tension and so it's very important that you get that bridge in the correct spot. This usually is a matter uh, you're going to want to address this anytime you change your strings on your banjo but also every once in a while uh, even if you don't change your strings it's a good thing to check uh, that the bridge is in the right spot. The main purpose to do this is so the banjo intones correctly. Intonation is just the um, the act of having an instrument play in tune all the way up the neck not just in the open position and the further out of kilter that bridge is the more noticeable the um, out of tuneness will be as you move up the neck. So uh, that's what we're going to be working on today and uh, I'll try to give you some pointers and it's really quite a simple process. There's no way to really screw it up. You just might not get it perfectly right, but it's everything's reversible. So uh, uh, let's get to it, okay? Okay, so let's get down to uh, the nuts and bolts of setting that bridge. What we have here is a nice gold tone banjo and that bridge is in the wrong spot. Uh, how do I know this? Because I just moved it into the wrong spot. So we can place it in the correct spot. The first thing we're going to do is I want to explain a concept to some of you folks who might not know this concept and it's called the harmonic on a banjo. For you folks who know what a harmonic is, bear with me for a brief uh, period um, and we'll get to, uh, you know, we'll move down the road a little bit. A harmonic is when I take my finger and I lightly place it over the 12th fret. I don't put it where I finger the 12th fret, I put it lightly over the fret, not pushing down, just lightly touching, and I'm going to pluck the string. It makes a, it makes a note. And that note is a perfect octave of this string of the open string. So if I play it open, that's the note harmonic is one octave higher and what's happening right there is this string when you use a harmonic is vibrating in a perfect uh, half right now so if you could see it in slow motion it would be a sine wave reverse sine wave right over the 12th fret going like this that this that and so there's our harmonic very big difference than when I push down this is the fretted note and we're going to use that as um, we're going to use those two notes to see where that bridge should be. Okay, here's the concept. Harmonic is going to be my target note because that harmonic has nothing to do with where the frets are. I'm just lightly touching it over the 12th fret. If I were to touch it over the 13th fret and play a harmonic, it's still going to play the same note because it's only going to vibrate at this halfway point. It will also vibrate exactly half of that, exactly half of that. It's a, it's a physics thing. But what we're really aiming at is that target note. And now when I play the second note, which is fretted in a normal manner, we want that to match perfectly. That note is a little bit flat compared to this note. Harmonic, or the target. Here's our fretted note definitely flatter the second note. Okay, that fretted note, let's remember when I'm fretting, I can't really mash down on this with all my weight. I want to put use just about as much force as I would use if I were playing this instrument in a normal manner. So no fear leaning into it like this. You're just going to get it down to a, a nice pressure. There's my target. There's my uh, fretted note and it's definitely flat. Okay, I can move this bridge to make the string sound different. I can't move my frets. So this is what we're going to be moving. And if I have a harmonic that's here and, a tar uh, and the fretted note that's flat, it means this scale length is too long. I need to shorten this scale length. Well, I can't move any part of this banjo except that bridge. I want to shorten my scale length which means the overall length of the string that's being played. So I'm going to shorten up this bridge this direction. I'm going to shorten up the scale length, I should say. 
And so to do that, I'm going to carefully grab the bridge, and I really want to grab both sides, and I want to grab it all the way up and down. I don't want to just grab the top, because there's a, a chance you might flip that bridge onto the side. It makes a very bad noise, and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to grab it firmly, slide it up a bit. Okay, now, I'm not worried about it being in tune with itself. I'm just worried about that one string now. Let's play a target note. Harmonic. Fretted note. Close. I hear it as still just a little bit flat. I'm going to move that a little bit more. Grab it firmly and just wiggle it up a little. Banjo bridges are quite easy to move because they're on a slick surface. Um, harder to do it on a mandolin, but the same process does take place on a mandolin. So let's try that again. That's my target. Pretty darn close right now. Um, I'm not going to worry about if it's off just a tiny bit because I still want to do the exact same process on this first string. So let's do that next. So we're going to do the first string. This is also a D, um, and I'm going to use the same process. I'm going to use a harmonic, then I'm going to fret it. I wanted to point out, you might have noticed that after I play each of these notes, I'm dampening the strings. I don't want all these overtones ringing. I, I want to hear each note clearly and fresh. So here's my harmonic. Stop the strings. Here's my fretted note. Now I hear that is just a little bit flat, the second note. My fretted note, just a little bit. It's pretty, pretty fine, but I, that's what I'm hearing. Here's what I'm going to do. I think this is in the right place because I just set the bridge for that. So I'm going to try to leave this there and just nudge this bridge on this end so this is going to slip upwards just a little. So trying to keep this firm here and just I just tweaked it a little bit. Not sure if you can tell, but it went from pretty much straight across or perpendicular to the strings. I've now changed it to this sort of angle, but not as, not as extreme as that. That's usually what you're going to end up with anyway. Just about any stringed instrument is going to have a bridge or saddle that is slightly angled this way. That's to allow or compensate for these fatter strings needing a long scale length. Skinnier strings need a slightly shorter scale length, so they play in tune up and down the neck. Let's try this target again. And the fretted note. I'm pretty happy with that. So this bridge is now pretty much where I would like it to stay. And this uh, is what we have, uh, what we call, we've just set the bridge in the correct spot. This banjo is ready to go. Generally, that's the last thing we do if we're setting up a banjo. We're going to put strings on it, we'll clean it up before that, we'll have a fingerboard, whatever. But you don't really want to monkey with this if you're going to play around with the strings now or if you're going to put it in a different tuning or whatever. So now I have the bridge where I want it and this banjo is ready to go, except I would tune all the strings now. Notice I didn't even have to be in tune at all. Like I don't even know how close this was to a perfect D. It doesn't matter though as long as we're just matching harmonic to the fretted note. Harmonic to the fretted note. And that is setting a bridge on your banjo. All right, folks, so we have uh, uh, moved the camera so you can see a tuner now. And I'm going to go through just a couple of those procedures of the harmonic uh, as the target note and then the fretted note. So here's my open string. And I'm just going to get that to a D. Good, we're pretty close there. Here's the harmonic. So we're real close to D, maybe a hair sharp. That's okay though. And now here's my fretted note. Notice that's going to be that's flatter than my target note. Here's the harmonic. Here's the fretted note. Definitely flat. So you can use a tuner 
as a visual aid for sure. And what we're really doing is we are trying to match those notes exactly. So what I'm going to do is very quickly move that bridge forward because I need to shorten the scale length. So it was flat, so I need to make it sharp or shorten. Let me play a harmonic. Where's that, that going to be? Notice how we're sharper now. That's okay. I want to match that with my fretted note. Ooh, pretty close. Let me do it again. Harmonic. Fretted note. So we're just about there. And that, that is how you can use a tuner to uh, augment your ear. But, um, you know, it is a very good uh, practice for your ear training to try to use your ear first and see just how close you are between matching those notes as a harmonic and as a target note. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching this video. Um, that's how you set the bridge on your banjo. If you notice here, it's a little bit difficult to tell, but that bridge is slightly angled. On the treble side, it's going to be a little bit shorter. It's going to be a little longer on that side. So the basic idea is you're going to end up with something of your bridge is going to be something like that. If it's angled like that, you probably want to go through the procedure again. I really appreciate you watching, and I hope this was helpful. Thanks.